Hi weavers, here is how to hand hem a kitchen towel. I've got my raw edge, by the way, I after finishing this towel, I've put it through a hot wash, I've dried it, it's completely dry, I've given it a press with the iron on the cotton setting, and now I'm ready to deal with the hems. So I start with my dog ear technique, which you may have come across before. I've got a blog post about this technique, and I think the blog post is called Kelly's Perfectly Hemmed Towels or something like that. So folding those in and then we've got the raw surged edges. Your edges may be zigzagged, doesn't matter. Either way, I'm folding down that raw edge. It's really up to you how far you fold it down, but you only need to fold it just over onto itself like so and if it's a little bit wonky at this point don't worry because you can fix that up a little in the next step okay now that that's all folded and pressed down you take it and you're going to double hem this way you can fold it down a little bit further this time I guess what I'm really trying to do is get it parallel to the line of my border. My tail has a border, so I've got my pattern here and then I've got a plain weave border. I want it to look straight once it's stitched up. Press that down. Still on hot cotton setting here. Okay, once that's done, you can just eyeball it and see whether you think it's even enough. I can see here that mine is a little thick in that spot, so I'm just going to adjust that and press it again. And then once you're happy with the lines that you've got, you can take some pins and pin this hem in place to hold it. The ironing does a pretty good job of holding it, but once you actually start stitching on it and you're moving it around, you will find that you would rather have it pinned in place. It makes the whole thing much easier. However many pins you think you need, you can do a lot or you can just do a few. Okay, so that's one end of my towel. I'm going to flip my towel around and do the other end, which I've actually already done. Make sure that your hems are both on the same side of the fabric, so you don't want one hem facing the wrong side and one hem facing the right side. And then we're ready to get our needle and thread. Okay, so I've got my needle and thread. You can choose a needle size that suits you, but don't use a tapestry needle for this. You need something with a sharp point. And I've got my thread. I always use Gudeman thread, not sponsored. It's just I've found over time that buying cheap thread is really a false economy because it inevitably breaks. Gudeman thread doesn't break. It's good stuff. Okay, so starting at the corner, it doesn't matter which corner you start at, but one of the corners of your hem. You're going to take the needle and thread underneath the hem, just into this section here right near the corner and I've knotted my thread so I'm just taking it through a couple of a couple of warp threads and I'm going to pull it through until it stays then I can place my hem back in place and you see that the thread is kind of wedged in there now I'm going to take right on the edge of my of my hem I'm going to go in just a couple of millimeters really and go through that folded edge. Pull it through and then I'm going to go back down to the main part of the towel. This time I can't really get underneath it so much but I'm going to go as close as I can to that folded edge and pick up one or two warp threads from underneath. There you go, I've picked up one warp thread pull through 
and then I'm going to go up through that folded edge again. This is a kind of a catch stitch and so you're taking a very little bit of each part of the towel in order to bring those the hem and the main part of the towel together. So down here again I'm going through one or two threads on the main part of the towel and then directly above that I'm going through the folded hem right on the edge. Now if you like your towels to have a as close to invisible stitching as possible this is the method for you. So crossways horizontally I'm going and then I turn the needle vertically just above where the thread has come out of the fabric and go through that folded hem like so. I hope you can see well enough with this thread. Down to the base fabric again, horizontal stitch running through and then a vertical stitch coming through the folded hem directly above and you just continue that way right across. Once you get a bit faster at this you can choose if you want to to do both of these actions in one single action. Now by that I mean when you scoop down to your base fabric to pick up your stitch which I've done there you can in the same action come up through the folded hem. You're going to be more on an angle than you were before but that's not a problem and it speeds it up. But if you want to, if you haven't done this before, maybe for a start, do it in two separate actions. So you see I'm doing the scoop and I'm going through the hem at the same time. And it makes really tiny little stitches. Now one thing is you don't want to leave too much gap between the stitches that you're doing. The longer I leave, well number one, the less strong my hem's going to be because there's going to be big gaps in between the stitches which makes them vulnerable to catching on things. And the other thing is you're going to have like little bumps and bubbles in your hem because of the gaps as well. So small stitches. Oh and then a third thing would be if you leave too much space between your stitches then they're going to show because they're going to be jumping over to different parts of the fabric whereas this way it's more invisible. You can take your pins out as you go if they're getting in your way and just continue. So I've done to here now. Of course this is not a quick method like the sewing on the machine is but as I said if invisible stitching is important to you if you think that looks more refined or you just prefer it or some people just love hand stitching so that's a good thing too. It's a good quiet relaxing activity to do that's for sure. So I just continue that way right across the towel and then when I've done that I'm going to knot it off, I'm going to bury the knot into the fabric and I'm going to turn it around and do the other hem. Now if you like the look of this towel, because I'm sure some people are going to ask me about it, what pattern is that towel? This is from my new floor loom class that is not yet released but will be before too long I hope. And this is one of my original designs for the four shaft component of that class. We make four different towels um, that I design uh, as four shaft and each towel is different and they're all very lovely. Also there will be a blog post that goes with this video so please click over to my website kellycastanovaweavinglessons.com to view that post and in that post I will also have links for you for materials used and extra information if you're after that. Alright thanks for joining me everyone I hope this video helps you if it does 
please like and share and subscribe. I would appreciate that so much. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. And until next time, happy weaving.